Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday. Not to be confused with Monday when I would have been here yesterday live, but you got Dan Poole yesterday. Today you have Will England with me, and we're going to be talking about the most important thing in the world, water. Yes, ma'am. Water. Can you imagine our life without water? Ain't going to happen. <laughs> Ain't happening at my house. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so we're going to talk water. But I want to do a few announcements. Will is, uh, he works with the Cherokee County Water Authority, and he knows a lot about water. I know that I can't do without water, so I think it's important to get to know him, and we're going to do that in just a few minutes. I have to say happy, happy thank you to everybody who sent uh, cards, wishes, calls. Yes, it has been a weird week today. My pain level is 10, but I'm smiling. And I told Will, I said, if I start screaming during a commercial break, just beware, young man. So it's been a, it's been a bad week. But, but they got the cancer. The doctor apologized for going so deep. And I said, sir, did you get it all? He said, I think I have. The margins look good. So that's all that matters. So a few more tests tomorrow and Thursday, and then all the stitches in my chest will come out. The arm is going to take about 90 days to heal, according to the doctor. But all is well. Pain level is 10, and I'm here, and I'm smiling. So, ah! <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for the cards, and thank you, thank you, thank you to Carol and Wallace Parks, who sent me this beautiful card. If only I could wish away your every pain, your every hardship, every challenge that you are facing, I, it would be my wish that these caring thoughts and words of support could make everything immediately better. Just know that I believe in you, and I'm hoping for kind, a kind, the kind of brighter days you deserve ahead. Until then, I'm certain your strength will carry you through. It's hard to know what to say at a time like this, but know that I care and you're in my thoughts. You're not alone. Praying for you, Carol and Pastor Wallace Parks. Love, love, love them. Love them. Thank you so very much. And I love this. It has a butterfly on it. And I told Ansley the other day, I said, butterflies make you feel happy and, and make you feel good. So that is precious. That is priceless. Thank you so much. Thank you to everybody for the prayers, for the messages. My doctors are fantastic. I had to go in and thank the uh, young lady who was responsible for getting me into surgery immediately. And I'm just blessed. I mean, just think about it. Um, my mother lost a battle with the same exact cancer because she didn't take care of it fast. I think I'm doing it in record fast time. I think I've seen more doctors in a week than anybody in history. I think that I got, you know, I've got a great team behind me and we're gonna make this happen and I'm gonna be around for a while. I do know and I think it's, it would be bad of me not to take this opportunity to tell you, get a checkup. Melanoma kills. And um, yesterday I had one doctor who was seeing me tell me that her father-in-law passed from melanoma. He had one spot on his back. He had two that they removed, no problem. He had one on his back and she said, the best way I can describe it is it is like a tree. It starts to grow and it attacks everything in your body get a checkup, get a good dermatologist. I use Marietta Dermatology where I have been going for 45 years. I took a break and went somewhere else for a while. And I'm back at Marietta where I was for many, many years. And it's so funny, one of my dear friends, Laura, who lives in Ball Ground, and I sold her a house. She was at Marietta Dermatology when I started there 45 years ago. They were my mother's doctors and I quite frankly think that what saved me was the fact that they went to my mother's file and they looked and they said, oh, and they got me in the day, the day of. So that's medical history, you, but medical mystery, me medical mystery, medical history, and medical miracle. Because mama's history and the fact that they knew mine was the aggressive kind and we got to stop it in its tracks, melanoma kills please go get a checkup. Please take care of yourselves. And if you do it once a year, they're gonna be doing a full body scan on me every 90 days until we know that I'm clear. And um, I have a couple of, I have three more spots they're dealing with, but um, one is in my scalp, which is weird. And so if you have to have somebody check your scalp, they have to check every inch of your scalp. It's very strange how that stuff happens, but it is real, and I would say it is the booger of cancers. It is awful, but 
Got it, got it. Have a big, deep, sink, cold crater in my arm, but that's okay. That's okay, the cancer's gone, so. All right, we wanna show you some photos of baby Zanna. And this, I have to brighten everybody's day with this child because when I'm feeling gloom and doom and sad and worried and wondering and thinking, all I have to do is say, Ansley, do y'all wanna meet me for dinner? Do y'all wanna come and see me? Do y'all wanna, my nose is gonna run today because my allergies are up. Yeah, I knew that, but there. That's why my allergies are up. I went and took pictures of those roses. That's what's wrong. That's why I can't breathe. <laughs> but aren't they beautiful? And uh, several ladies would tell me that these are called New Dawn. And as I was growing up, they always called them grandmother's roses, but they're beautiful. And there's Ansley and Zanna as they came to the plant sale and congratulations to the Ball Ground Garden Club. They had an amazing sale. And Evelyn, honest to goodness, she, the whole crew worked themselves to death, but I can say she was whooped. She was whooped. So it was a big deal, a big event, and so many people came. And this was us introducing Zanna to grass and letting her play in the grass, and that was so funny because you know Zanna well enough to know everything goes to her mouth. Well, the first thing that she did was put grass in her mouth, and we're like, no, you're not cattle, and you're not a goat, and you're not supposed to eat the grass but she loved it and uh, thank God for these little children and, and thank God for the mothers who were able to celebrate with their children this weekend. You know, when you've lost a child, when you've stood at a grave, when you've dealt with the things that we've dealt with, you just, um, it's a tough day, but uh, we had a wonderful, wonderful day with Ron and Shirley and so very thankful for them and it was just a good, good day, just a good, good day and that little baby made us all smile. So. And those, don't you love those flowers that come back every year and you don't have to do a thing except wait on them to come back? You don't have to water them. You don't have to fertilize them. The good Lord waters them. And they're just amazing. And they're just great. Now that is a little piece off of the special that you're going to be seeing. It's aired a few times here on ETC. And um, it's going to be on tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. I'm going to be back at a doctor. So tomorrow you get to see the full-fledged poke salad episode and look at the macaroni and cheese in Zanna's hair. That's what you do with mac and cheese. You put it in your hair, then you don't get the carbs. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, it was a good weekend. I hope everybody had a great weekend. I hope that you did something fun with your family. And if your family's not close by, I hope you got to hear from them. It is a tough time for many, many moms. And um, I have a dear, dear friend up in North Carolina who lost her only son. And she said it was it was a bummer. It was it was a bad weekend. But um, we have to we have to help each other, and we have to help each other get through those bad days. So, and thank you to everybody who's helped me get through the last ten days, because y'all have been amazing, and I appreciate it so much. And to Jenny Byers who went to the doctor with me last week, and that y'all is poke salad. That is Miss Sweet Carolyn's cooked poke salad, and uh, she loves to cook poke salad, and she is an expert at it. So that's poke salad, and that's what the Mother's Day special is about. So <clears throat> if you haven't cooked it, if you haven't tried it, you ought to try it once. It's not required that you try it twice if you don't like it, <laughs> but you should try it once, so, so check it out. And there is Sweet Zanna with Nanny and we we had a great time so thank you thank you thank you and thank you thank you to those people who um, have reached out again your prayers made a difference and I appreciate it so much so is that baby not cute do y'all like that baby almost as good as I like her you know she's been on here since she was six weeks old and uh, actually I have the video we did of me sitting here in the rocking chair holding her but she's just got to make you smile. You just got to smile when you see Zanna. So, and uh, she was named because that is God's greatest gift. Today's saying, when you're doubting yourself, meanwhile, other people are wondering how you do it all so effortlessly. <laughs> Give yourself more credit. Okay, that's a good one for today. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's talk water. Let's talk importance of water. Cherokee County is growing. Yes, ma'am. And you have a job in Cherokee County that means that you are responsible for not only water flowing to everybody, but good water flowing. Can right. you talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. My role at the Cherokee County Water and Sewage Authority is uh, I'm an environmental lab analyst, mm -hmm. which means that... You have a degree in... <laughs> early childhood education. 
That is so funny. <laughs> you never know where life will take you, though. That's right. That's right. And you love so, your job. I do. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it got into it accidentally, mm -hmm. which a lot of water professionals seem like they got into it accidentally. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a buddy that told me about the great benefits that they had at the Water Authority, and mm -hmm. so I came in search of benefits. Started out at the Water Authority in 2014 as a flagman mm -hmm. directing traffic. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Went from there to the wastewater treatment plant. Uh -huh. I worked there for about two and a half years, and then from there to the Environmental Affairs Office. Now, and is the wastewater on Gober Road? Uh, we have one on Gober Road. Okay, okay. Where's the big one where you worked? The one that I worked is off West Wiley Bridge Road, which is towards the Fulton County line. Oh, wow. Down off 92. Oh, wow. Long yeah. way, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many gallons? I, I can't even imagine. Cherokee County is growing so much. How many gallons a day would go through that facility? Which one? The we have three. One. Okay. <laughs> wow. Any of the three. And so our largest one is going through an upgrade right now, and it's going to be permitted at 8 million gallons a day. 8 million gallons a day. Yes, ma'am. Does that mean we should be conserving water? We should be conserving water. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and that's one of the things in that one of my roles in the Water Authority is to do education and outreach, mm -hmm. which I'm so glad that you and Evelyn came out to the tabling event we did in Ballground. Evelyn said, we're going. We're going. I said, okay, we're I'm going. Glad. <laughs> we're she going. She has been a big help. Yeah. We do yeah. river cleanups every <laughs> fall. Right. And she comes out to everyone that she we does. do. She does. She does. She's been a big help. And let's talk about the rivers because our cities that have rivers nearby better off with water than cities who, I'm trying to think of somewhere that they don't have much water. Are you better off if a city flows through? Like LJ has a couple of rivers. Mm -hmm, so they do. do they provide water for LJ? I mean, is that what the biggest source is of, of Surface water? Surface water is the biggest source mm -hmm. of all of them. Um, and, and what we talked about before, you know, depending on whether that source is well water, mm -hmm. uh, artesian aquifer, or whether it's coming from a, a, a surface, it makes a lot of difference in its chemical composition. So the, a lot of the minerals and the, the things that you'll find in well water are not the same as what you would see in surface water. Right. And, and I'm, oh, I'm going to get in trouble over this one. I'm kind of a downer about a well because I lived with, at my mother's with a well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think you told us a story. It's tough if you're well and you're soaked up in the shower and your well quits. <laughs> what do you do? You call your <laughs> office and say, do you want me to come in soapy or do you want me to stay at home and fix my well? Right. So a well is a challenge, isn't it? It can be. Yes, ma'am. And there was a great article that was in the Pickens Progress. Mm -hmm. uh, jo Justin Fellenbaum uh -huh. did an article about, does your water taste funny? And he talked right. about some of the different tests you need <laughs> to do and how often you need to test them. And that's a great opportunity through the US, uh, UGA Extension Office that mm -hmm. they offer that service. And that's right behind the old jail in Jasper, in downtown mm -hmm. Jasper, just right back there. Right. I went in to get a second test because we tested a well that failed. And that's kind of how we got off on this water thing because I talked to him and then met you and I said, as a realtor, when we're selling a house, mm -hmm. the first question you should ask is, where's my water source? Absolutely. Because if you buy a house and you've got four kids and you can't flush a toilet, somebody's <laughs> going to be in trouble. Exactly. So it's so important, so important. So it let's is. go back to Cherokee County, 8 million gallons a day at of one waste. facility. Right. Waste. Mm-hmm. That's just unreal. Now drinking That's water. Unreal. Drinking water on average, we produce about twenty three million. Twenty three million. Right. A day. Yes, ma'am. A day. Okay. <laughs> what kind of condition is the Cherokee County water in? Very good. Very good. I saw it's the a well statistics. Run, yeah, well run organization. Mm hmm And are we prepared for the future growth? Yes, ma'am. We do uh, projective looking at, at what we anticipate the numbers of people that are going to move in are mm -hmm. and we try to make decisions for the betterment of our system and the mm -hmm. betterment of the community based mm -hmm. on those. Now budget. We got to talk budget <clears throat> because I had somebody squawking, my water bill went up to $25 and I'm like, honey, ours is 70 a month <laughs> and I'm tickled to death to have water for $70 a month. Right. Charge me 100 if you want to. I mean, seriously, the idea that you manage that much water and it comes to the door mm -hmm. and you use it when you want it, $100 a month is reasonable. The Water Authority is going to love me, aren't they? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I've had a well, y'all. I've had. I've been where there was a well and it went dry or it had a problem or it had an issue. Right. 
People say, well, I don't have a water bill, I have a well. Well, that's great, and I love well water. I love tasting the well water when it's clear and pure and good. But I've also seen some of those wells that it wasn't. Right. So do you project when you're projecting for growth, how do y'all budget when there's going to be a price hike on that water? Because I know you get people squawking, because I heard an old squawker. <laughs> and I'm like, what you squawking about? You know, what you squawking? That's a fair price. So yep. how, who determines that? How do you know? That's the finance department. Mm, uh, and so that's completely tough. different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. From, it's tough because they have to look at how can we provide for this many more homes and budget wisely. Absolutely. And they have to, but they're going to. I trust them. I trust them. And with, e with every utility, those are things you need to think about mm -hmm. um, because it, there is a cost associated with the pipes that are in the ground, mm -hmm. how much it costs to fix them. Mm -hmm. And there's only so many band-aids you can put on a pipe before you need to replace it. Oh, sure. And thinking about that reinvesting in the infrastructure is something absolutely mm -hmm. has to go into that cost that you're you're charging people for the water consumption. Right, and then you have to pay your employees and, and, right. and for material and whatever. At a competitive rate. You need employees that are going to be attracted to the mm -hmm. industry. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something, you know, several utilities are having a, a difficult time with right now. If you don't that's, offer. And one of the ladies I met with you was from Ohio, wasn't she? Mm -hmm. Did she move right. down here and then just got a job? Or did she live here and then came to work? How did that? Did she come here seeking a good job? She came here for school. Okay. And then from that, she got a job in the water industry. Mm -hmm. So she also just kind of fell into it. Mm -hmm. What do you have to like to, to get one of these jobs that obviously is a good one? What, what are the things that's important for you to be good at your job? I really like being outside. Mm -hmm. And so with my job, I do surface water testing. Mm -hmm. So I go out in streams like mm -hmm. Little River, Mill Creek. Um, so I'm all the time out in a different stream mm -hmm. collecting a water sample. So being able to be outside Do is, you eyeball it first and say, huh? No. No. <laughs> that's, it is a misconception though. Yeah. A lot of people... They look at turbidity, how mm -hmm. cloudy water looks as an mm -hmm. indicator of whether it's clean or not. And you can't see bacteria, and no. bacteria is one of the main things that, that we need to think about in terms of whether you're going to get sick if you drink it. Mm -hmm. Well, I got to laugh about this one. It about bit us in the kazoozy, but we, we were saying that water smells so good. It smells so good. That well smells so good. Then we tested it. It was so bad. Yeah. <laughs> you can't tell. No, you can't. <laughs> you can't and that's, tell. Funny story, one of the lessons that we do in the classroom. Uh, and you will come to schools and talk to kids. Within the Cherokee County. Yes, yeah. yes. Yes, yeah, ma'am. Yeah. Within our service area, we mm -hmm. try to educate adults and students. Yeah. But one of the lessons that we do is a Project WET, which is a water-based curriculum. Uh -huh. uh, it's called Poison Pump. And in that lesson, we talk about there was an incident, incident that happened in England, uh -huh. uh, 1886, I believe it was, where the people were... Uh, starting to get cholera, which is a disease that comes from, well, waste, mm -hmm. human waste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, in the lesson, they talk about how sweet tasting the water was. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> and how there were several people that preferred to drink that water as opposed to the other water. Oh, no. Right. And it was this, ooh, the ooh. more they drank, the sicker they got because it, it caused uh, diarrhea. And oh, so, wow. They keep drinking the water to try to stay hydrated, and it just keeps getting worse and worse until they finally pass away. Oh, my gosh. Right. And that killed a bunch of people. It did. Yeah. yeah. And right after that was when they instituted to put uh, chlorine in the water to mm -hmm. kill pathogens. Mm -hmm. Now, chlorine, is there anything else added to the water? Because, you know, when you buy bottled water, and, and the last four or five brands I bought in a bottle, you look, and there's a little sediment in the bottom of it. And that's, I'm not going to name the brands, but I can tell you the cheap brands, the good brands, and the bad brands, they all had a little bit of sediment. Is yeah. that normal? I can't speak to the bottle water. Yeah. But in water. I normally. did some research into bottle water, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of different sources, and they have to list them on the water bottles. No, it doesn't say fresh water. Yeah. It says a bunch of other stuff. It'll say spring, or it'll say uh, from a municipal <laughs> source, or it'll, and you know, there's there's some companies municipal that do. Municipal means they went to your spigot. Right. And got water. Yeah. Seriously. They and we were dumb enough to buy it. Are we crazy? <laughs> well, and to talk about like the cost of things, if we charged for water that comes to your home at the same rate that they charge for a bottle of water. Oh my gosh. It'd be astronomical. Oh, it'd be crazy. Yeah. It'd be crazy. I went in and bought a bottle of water the other day. It was a dollar ninety nine cents and it was literally a bottle of water. And I'm going, Are you kidding me? So that means if I if you drank even 
15 of those bottles in a month, that would be, that would equate to the water bill that the folks were whining about that was $25. And I'm like, you're whining at a $25 <laughs> water bill? I would be singing zippity doo dah. Right. So um, water is so important. Now in Cherokee County, I know the lady I met um, loved her job. You obviously love your job. What if some kid is sitting there watching us today in school and says, that would be a good job. Tell yeah. us what path they would follow. To work for the Water Authority, all you have to have is a high school diploma. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, like when I went to work in the wastewater department, even though I had a degree in early childhood education, that doesn't really help you in no. treating water. No. So the, the Cherokee County Water Authority, they, uh, they sent me off to school. There's a, a school called the GWWI, which is the Georgia Water and Wastewater Institute. Mm -hmm. It's a one week long class. They paid for me to go. I got trained up. I took a test. And once I passed the test, then I made more money based on that. That's awesome. The state of Georgia has three different levels of water and wastewater license. We do three, two, one, one mm -hmm. being the highest. And I was able to get each one of those licenses and based on having those license, uh, make more money in the process of doing it. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. a great opportunity. It is. Now, and, and seriously, they could like that job enough they wouldn't have to go to college because if they have their high school diploma, then they are going to train them. That's right. amazing. Absolutely, it that is. Parents, you could save yourselves a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Send those kids to college. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, and we try to go out in schools and tell students about the mm -hmm. opportunities that water has available. Uh, and it's you one of those. You have to man it 24 hours, don't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So you have three shifts or four shifts? Two. Three. Two. Okay, 12 Yeah, hour the way shifts. we do. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 12 hour shifts, it's four days on, four days off, mm -hmm. and then we rotate every three months between days and nights. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I sold a, a house for a young man who works there. Yeah. Miles. Yeah. And I think he works, I think he works at the one off Gober Road, I'm not sure, but nice young man, nice young man, and, uh, and he likes his job there. So. Mm -hmm. Now tell people what they, if, if they're going to purchase a home, and I'm the realtor, first thing I say is, oh, you have a great well here, or Oh, you have a well here. <laughs> yeah. Either way, yeah. you have a well. You have to deal with a well. Or you have county water. And I think I'm right about this. I don't think LJ has any kind of county water out in the area. Everybody up here pretty much has wells. I, I don't know. Right. I know there's a water, uh, Etowah, mm -hmm. wa uh, not Etowah, Etowah is Dawsonville. Uh, Gilmer County does have a water From system. From the Kiswati, as Dwight says, I need to learn to say it. <laughs> Cause why tea? <laughs> but um, if if you only have well water and your well goes bad mm -hmm. and public water isn't available, what do people do? What do you do? You about out of options. It. I mean, it, it's scary yes, because if you buy a property, and I've sold a lot of properties on wells, and um, and I'm thinking. And my first phone call is always to the county. Are y'all going to run water? And you said something about Flat Bottom has water now. Does Flat Bottom have water now? Part of Flat Bottom Road and Ball Ground goodness. is goodness. serviced by the Water Authority in Cherokee County. Yes, I saw them putting lines in, and I stopped and said, "Thank you, thank you, thank you." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. They need it. We need we need public water. I think we need it everywhere, just in case your well fails. Yeah. Well, and there's a lot of safety protocols that we have to do by state mm -hmm. law. Mm -hmm. uh, we pull 130 samples for bacteria and for chlorine to make sure there's enough chlorine residual and chlorine residual. You put a certain amount of chlorine in, uh, it kills anything that's in there and there needs to be some left over. Mm. So we test to make sure there's some left over at the furthest most point throughout our system. Mm -hmm. And we have to go around and collect 130 samples every month. Uh, wow to make sure that that is the case. And there's no bacteria. If there is, we have to retest, and we have to report it to the state, and there's a series of, of safety measures that are mm -hmm. in place to make mm -hmm. sure that we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. Wow. Now let me ask you this. If you, um, if somebody gets a bad test, if, if y'all are out testing and, mm -hmm. and you immediately, how do you address that immediately? Like you said, you go out to rivers and creeks and things and you get back and test it. Do you think then there's been a spill upstream? Is that kind of what you look for? What Not necessarily. So in my line of work, testing in a creek, sometimes you will get some a, a weird number. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes, the, the thing about testing a flowing stream, stream of water mm -hmm. is that you're getting a snapshot in time. Mm -hmm. You're getting a... That will change in a minute. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'll collect a liter of water, or sometimes four liters of water, mm -hmm. out of, you know, 
uh, over a thousand gallons that are flowing at a time. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's measured in cubic feet per second. And so just, I mean, that's nothing. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times if we do get something that's weird, especially a really high something, maybe bacteria, maybe mm -hmm. phosphorus or nitrogen, then we can go out and do more testing mm -hmm. uh, and then look to delineate a stream, which is to take a stream, you know, something like, uh, like the Etowah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of feeders that come into it. You have Sharp Mountain, you have mm -hmm. Long Swamp, you mm -hmm. have uh, different ones that are coming in and you can start to backtrack up the stream to try to figure out where the problem's wow. coming from. That's like a, almost solving a puzzle it's a pretty big puzzle. It is, yes ma'am. That's a pretty big puzzle. That's a pretty big puzzle. Now, who do you report to if, if there's a problem and you're like, oh, who do, you, who, who do you pick up the phone and call? EPD is our, mm -hmm. uh, the one that we have to report to. And anytime, our department also handles uh, sewage spills. So mm -hmm. anytime that there's a sewage spill that occurs, we go out, we test upstream, we test downstream. We get readings for pH, we get readings for dissolved oxygen, conductivity, and bacteria. Mm -hmm. And we have to report to them, yes, uh, waste got into the stream, mm -hmm. and we have to test it. And how would that happen? I've always wondered when they say, we had a waste spill, and I'm like, yeah. well, what'd you spill it for? How does right. it happen? Any number from of things. From a factory or? No, a lot of times it, it comes from fat soles and grease going oh, down the drain, yes. or our, one of the big problems People that we have. People should never do that. Never put that grease down your drain. That's a dummy. It is. That's well, a dumb thing to do. And I've seen some people stand there and do it, and I'm going, what were you thinking? <laughs> and there's a product out there called Flushable Wipes. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Yeah. No, it's not flushable. Mm -mm. Well, <laughs> flushable and biodegradable are not the same. Mm -mm. So we'll talk, <laughs> we, we talk to students about what's flushable. And mm -hmm. so mom and dad's car keys are flushable. Mm -hmm. A toy car is flushable. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean it's biodegradable and it shouldn't go down the toilet. That's right. We stick That's to right. the three P's. Pee, pee poop and uh, paper. <laughs> Talking about toilet <laughs> paper. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, you know, when we look at what you're doing in Cherokee County and the magnitude, I mean, that's... Everywhere I go, there's like 60 houses here, 80 houses here. Y'all are prepared, and I love that about that. I love the idea that y'all knew that progress was coming. Right. And, and what did I tell you? We are um, preserving the past and embracing the future, and y'all are ready. Y'all are ready, and I, th I think that's great. We're going to take, take a break now for just a few minutes because I promised some very special people they would get to see something. <laughs> the Burnt Mountain Center is celebrating 50 years. 50 years of serving clients, very, very special dear friends. And uh, Debbie Rooker, we honor you for your job. We honor you for over 43 years of doing a job, taking care of a very special population, a lot of good folks. And we're gonna take a, a, about a 10 minute time to go on and, and show y'all when you visited here at ETC a few years ago. I would like to thank you and all the staff at ETC TV for inviting us to be guests on your program. We enjoy so very much being able to bring cheer in song. We would also like to thank you for your support of the mission and goals of the staff, parents, caregivers, and board of directors at Burnt Mountain Center. You're, I can't do it. You finish it. Here goes my makeup again. <laughs> you are truly a special friend to the choir and to Burnt Mountain Center. May you enjoy continued success as you reach out to your viewers, the Burnt Mountain Center choir members, and everybody signed it. It is so sweet. Precious. So sweet. Thank you. Thank you. My eye makeup can't take much more of this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are joined by the director of the Burnt Mountain Center. You have, Debbie Rooker, you have the most amazing job in the world. I'm truly mm -hmm. blessed. You have the most amazing job. Now, Jane, how did you get involved in this? Well, my background is social services, so I've always been involved in one way or another, uh, either paid or volunteer. Right. And um, after retiring, I just felt like I needed to give back to community. And Ryan Austin and I are in choir together at the church where we go, uh -huh. and his mom asked me about possibility of, of uh, going to the center and volunteering and helping start music with the gang, so we did. Well, um, you know, when we went to interview radio, have you seen the movie? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Loved it. I, I love the movie, but after I met these two wonderful gentlemen, I understood, because then I read the story of how radio could have been left aside, never helped, never supported, never brought out into what we call the real world. And this, this man 
Coach Jones made this great difference in this young man's life. Now, 46 years later, they are still partners in crime. <laughs> they are into something all the time. And they have brought awareness to doing for others, to doing for others. Now, as you volunteer, when you leave the center, do you want to tell other people about what you're doing? And do you want to bring more volunteers on? Constantly. In fact, uh, a girlfriend of mine from church is helps me with the group. Her mm -hmm. name is Gail, and we meet once a week over there at the center and sing and have a good time. Uh -huh. Now, why did they ask us not to sing, Charlene? Did they hear us sing? Well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we won't go there. <laughs> you know, we couldn't sing, but for you to put together a group of people, you taught one-liners, pretty much, mm -hmm. uh, one mm -hmm. verse in each song, and the time you put into that, are there ever times that you kind of bang your head and say, okay, guys, let's get it together. Let's get this done. <laughs> or is it always on cue and as good as it was today? Oh, no. <laughs> you heard our first song, Feliz Navidad. Uh -huh. uh, I don't think we know Spanish real well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought it was years. great. Yeah. <laughs> I took two years of Spanish and could not get it. Could not get it. If they deported me and sent me to Mexico, I would just sit there silent the, whole, the rest of my life. I can't get it. Now, occasionally, do you kind of bump a little little bump in the road and you think, okay, how can I get through? How can I make this happen? And then do you find a way to always get through? Oh, yes, yes. The guys are just so heartwarming to work with. Uh -huh. uh, if I feel down in any way and I go to the center, they're such a blessing. Mm -hmm. They add so much to our lives. Gail and I just... We were talking about it in the car before everybody got here, how much they bless our lives. We thought we were doing something for them, mm -hmm. but obviously they're blessing us more than we could ever share back with them. Right. Now, Debbie, you said you have treasures. You brought me a treasure today, and this looks like it's not something I want to keep. It looks like something we'll be eating. Uh -oh. Yes, it, it is. Like <laughs> you know, I had a lot of keepsakes, and um, it's funny, but I said if I can't wear it, eat it, or what else did I say? I had three things this year for Christmas. How precious. And everybody signed it. Now, uh -huh. can, can we go over their names? Can you tell us, everybody who's involved in that? Okay. Um, yeah, we got Brandy, uh -huh. uh, Brandy and, uh, yeah. James Corson, Vicki uh -huh. Davis, Matt, Jean, Swiss, Kyle signed Tim this Hitt. one. I see Tim Hitt yes. signature. Uh, Yay. Fred. Uh -huh. uh huh. And it's just a, a group of them. It's from all the, and uh -huh. Scotty signed that one. Uh -huh. It's just a, from uh, all the staff in the Thank participants. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Um, I know what your job means to you, and I know how fortunate you are to still have this job with budget cuts. Mm -hmm. Was there ever a time that the center was in crisis? It's always been a little bit close. You know, we're, with the budget cuts coming down and everything, you have to watch it and everything, but we have been very fortunate with the support of the community mm -hmm. that we've been able to uh, keep going. And we never turn anybody away. Right. And. Uh, there's new services that we offer, and we're going to continue to grow and to be the biggest center in North Georgia and give support to anyone in need. What about the cookbook? I haven't seen it yet, but I want to know, where can people purchase the cookbook? Uh, they're in some of the local stores in Blue Jasper. Stars, we're back. Okay, we're going to try and advance that a little bit so the guys can see themselves as they were singing and going off the air. Miss Debbie Rooker was here last week, and thank you, Dwight, for stepping in and doing my job while I was laying there getting sliced, diced, chopped, smothered, and covered, <laughs> and I got it done. <clears throat> Let's talk about getting it done in Cherokee County. You've gotten it done, and you have an annual report with you. Yes, ma'am. Is the annual report a good one? It is. Yes, ma'am. It is. And it's something that all water systems are required by law to put out. It's mm -hmm. called the Consumer Confidence Report, and it should be located pretty easily on any of the water municipalities websites. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of them send it out by mail. We've put it out in the newspaper, so we try to make sure it's easily accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of the things in this water report, it's going to talk about where the source of the water is, mm -hmm. which in Cherokee County, it comes from the Etowah, or mm -hmm. our source it comes from the Etowah. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's actually several different water municipalities located within Cherokee County. So you have City of Ball Ground, City of Willuska, City of Canton, and Woodstock. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're one of several. Who's the highest usage of those municipalities? We are. Really? Wow. Yes, ma'am. 
Wow. Now let's talk about, um, I ask you, if you turn on your water and you smell a little chlorine because you're, you're directed in your analysis to leave a little bit of chlorine in right. it. So that's a good thing if we smell chlorine. Mm -hmm. That's not a bad thing. People don't, don't call your water <laughs> department and say, oh, smell chlorine, you're supposed to. So yeah. yeah, that's good. And if it sits overnight or sits stagnant in a uh, pipe for a while, it will. As mm -hmm. soon as you turn it on for mm -hmm. the first few minutes, mm -hmm. it'll have that smell. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the areas in particular I'd like to draw attention to in the CCR, it talks about some of the different things that we test for. Mm -hmm. And once again, these things are required by law. Mm -hmm. And they should have a table that's going to talk about uh, what levels. Mm -hmm. And that's really important to look at. So in terms of parts per million, mm -hmm. uh, that equates to one liter in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. Wow. Mm -hmm. So a liter is... That's a liter. That's a liter. Wow. So imagine that in the size of an Olympic size swimming pool. Wow. That's, that's parts crazy. per million. Yeah. That's uh, parts crazy. per billion is about a teaspoon in an Olympic size swimming pool. Wow. wow. And parts per trillion, and it talks about all these in here. Mm -hmm. uh, parts per trillion is essentially, if you take a newspaper and compare it to the size of New Zealand, uh -huh. that's the difference in parts per trillion. Wow. So it talks about in hours it has copper, fluoride, lead, uh, nitrate, nitrite, chlorine, total organic carbon turbidity, trihalomethanes, haloacetic acids. That one doesn't roll off the tongue very no, well. No, it doesn't. Total coliform and E. coli. Hmm. Are some of the things that e. we coli test for. E. coli is a bad one, isn't it? It is. It's very important because it's a indicator species. Mm -hmm. E. coli is only found in the intestines of warm-blooded animals. We being warm-blooded animals. Mm -hmm. So Ooh. if we find that there, Ooh. it indicates that there Somebody are other died. bad things. Somebody died. Yeah. Well, there's other... Oh. Uh, human waste. Okay, okay. Right. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. And and when we go to the faucet and take advantage of turning on your water, we really don't think about what it takes to get it to us right. and to maintain it. And I think it's time that we salute the Water Authority <laughs> because I've had a well and I love drinking it, but I love the y'all are on time every time. <laughs> You're on time every time. You turn on the spigot and the water comes on. How horrible is it when you have a water main break and you have to call all these people and say, I'm sorry, but your water is going to be out for six hours. People get angry, don't they? They do, yes, ma'am. Oh, my gosh, they get angry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, whoa, well, we can't help it. We just can't Well, it's hard it. to imagine our life. We get so used to turning on yeah. the tap and it being yeah. there or flushing the toilet and it going away. Imagining anything otherwise uh -huh. is unimaginable. Uh -huh. it's, it's just it's difficult. Crazy. And people, we go in the school sometimes and we, we ask kids, try to draw a picture what, how you think that water gets to your faucet. And it's amazing, even adults, uh, there's a disconnect in what happens from point A to point B. We've had some students, they put a picture of raindrops coming down and the raindrops went to a spigot. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's, yeah. there's a lot of yeah. work and yeah. a lot of money and time and energy that goes into the treatment of water and getting it to your home. Mm -hmm. You know, when we think about rain, we've had tons and tons of rain, so that keeps the rivers full. It does. During a drought time, and you have to have us on a drought emergency system. Right. That's happened, hasn't it? It has. Thankfully, it's been a while. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, there definitely is different stages of drought. And we've they declared a drought a year or two ago, but it was in the preliminary stage. So mm -hmm. it didn't get to the point that you had to start issuing... Um, you know. Citations and don't wash your no. car and yeah. yeah and I hope yeah, we don't have that yeah. problem. I do too. I do too. Now, when we think about um, the drought or, or whatever, the rivers, what if there were a chemical spill in the Etowah? That's a good question. What if there were a, a massive train derailment and it went in the Etowah? What would happen to us? Well, in Cherokee County, about two years ago, we did a training exercise that involved um, several different departments. We mm -hmm. did the police, we did the fire, uh, GEMA, FEMA, and had everybody come together and we did a training exercise, a tabletop exercise to discuss that very thing. Mm -hmm. And based on a very similar scenario, we went through, all right, what protocols does your department have in place to deal with something like this? Mm -hmm. And tried to uh, identify where any kind of holes might be and try to fix those holes. Um, so I feel like that training exercise was very helpful mm -hmm. in the collaboration of the different departments and how to deal with the situation should it arise. Well, you, you just think about it. Even, even one tanker 
of some chemical that's dangerous right. getting in the Etowah, even though the Etowah is massive, mm -hmm. one tanker full could really do a number on that water. So It could. Now, do factories, do factories have the right to let their water, because I've always heard tales of, you know, I had a place over at Lake Wise and everybody said, oh, I wouldn't get in that water, it's nasty <laughs> because of all the factories around there. Do factories release their water into the rivers? Most do not. Okay. Most have to do a pre-treatment. Mm -hmm. There's a, uh, each organization that has a, uh, a pre-treatment permit, they have to treat their waste to a certain point before we will receive it. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, Whether it's from dye from a chemical plant yeah. or whatever, not waste is in a toilet, but waste is right. any kind of waste. Okay. Yeah. So our biggest one that comes to the Cherokee County Water and Sewage Authority is the chicken plant. Mm -hmm. And the reason that we have to have an industrial permit with them in particular is because their waste is such high strength. Mm -hmm. uh, so waste like that is measured in biological oxygen demand. Mm -hmm. And ha so essentially how much oxygen does it require to stabilize that waste? And chicken rendering, it requires a lot of oxygen to, to stabilize it. I'm thinking we got one here that is our, I think our largest employer. Yeah. And, and we would not want to shut them down because of any kind of issues. So I'm sure they're on top of it just like y'all right. are down there. Yeah. yeah. So they have to, their permit requires them to do a certain amount of treatment before it comes into our lines. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Yes, ma'am. You always, I've, I've always been. I think it's the Coosa over in Rome, and then uh, Lake Weiss. There were several places that I said, "Oh, I just love it over there." And they said, "But that water is nasty. Look at all those factories." And I said, "What?" And I thought, "Not in today's world, you know, because you're somebody's responsible." So, right. Yeah, yeah. EPD has a comprehensive list if you go on their website mm -hmm. of all the dischargers that go into the different water bodies and which water body they go into. Uh, but most factories come into a municipal wastewater mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. What if, if you go out to talk to kids in a school and you ask them to do a, like you said, you had them do a drawing or an experiment or whatever. Do you ever test the water in front of them and show them what's in it? I'm glad you asked that. Yeah. One of the things that we do teach, there's a protocol called Adopt-A-Stream, mm -hmm. which is a EPD education thing for citizen scientists. And one thing, the lady that you met and I, Lori, <laughs> we go out and we teach individual citizens, not just school kids, but we also teach individuals how to do that protocol mm -hmm. uh, and that test for things like dissolved oxygen, pH, conductivity, and bacteria. So it's a um, kind of a simplified version of the things that I do for work. Mm -hmm. And there's a database that has all the different monitored sites throughout the state of Georgia. So you can get on there and find one that's close to your home or a body of water that you're interested in mm -hmm. uh, and see what testing's been done on it. Well, and, and a kid, I, I have a friend who had a kidney disease and the doctor kept telling him, don't drink water with a high acidity level. Is mm -hmm. that important? Do y'all test for acid? Do you test for that? Well, that's covered in pH. Yeah, uh, right. Because so pH he, being the, the... And your pH balance is... It's really good. Mm -hmm. The Etowah River typically stays uh, I think it's 6.7 to about 7.3, 7.5. Mm -hmm. So it stays in a pretty narrow range, mm -hmm. which makes the treatment easier than mm -hmm. you if you have a lot of fluctuations. And to treat the water, to treat the water, mm -hmm. is there a time frame? Is it a 24 hour? Once it gets to you and you can release it to the public, what? tell me a little bit about the process. Sure, um, and I, I'll explain it. I don't do it as much justice as the water treatment plant supervisor does. Mm -hmm. We offer uh, treatment plant tours mm -hmm. uh, Monday through Friday, 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock, uh, and I can give you my contact that information. That would be interesting someone. to have kids go there and look because you, you think, okay, we're getting river water. Well, it's yeah. muddy and dirty. How are we going to drink that? Right. There's a process. There is. Yeah. So it first comes in from our raw water intake. Mm -hmm. It comes to a settling pond. So a lot of that turbidity and the solids. It goes to the bottom. Right. Yes, ma'am. Uh, and then it comes down to another holding tank, mm -hmm. uh, and it from that point it gets. When you're talking tank, that's got to be a big tank, doesn't it? It is. <laughs> that's yeah, tank. Tank, <laughs> tank doesn't really do it justice. It, yeah. When you're talking about 23 million gallons, yeah. that's <laughs> that's bigger big. than Tupperware. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so and we then there. Right, and then we add a uh, a coagulant, so uh, a chemical that allows the tiny solids. Uh, colloidal solids to mm -hmm. stick together and then settle out. Mm -hmm. You have to have enough detention time 
which is another, I know I'm throwing a lot of industry words at you. Mm -hmm. but, but that's good because people have to understand it can't just come out of the river. There's a lot of work right. involved in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, so you want to settle out as much as you can. Mm -hmm. It goes to a sand filter, so it gets filtered through different layers of sand mm -hmm. uh, it, to get rid of anything else that might be in there. And mm -hmm. then we add chloride, chloride, chlorine, mm -hmm. and fluoride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so crazy. some of those are the different yeah. components of what we do. So it's not a simple process, but it is, it, it is one of those greatest things. We can't live without the water. We can't drink the water in the state we find it in, in a creek that's muddy. So the process works. Now, if you, if you go to apply for your water and you say, I'm going to build a house over here mm -hmm. and um, there's no sewer, and how important is it to have your septic tank away from your water source? <laughs> <laughs> is that like number one? It is, is absolutely. Is that like number one when people say, well, I wanted to run it over here and I wanted to build my house. Well, you can't because of your water. Explain to them why. Sure. A well is only as good as its source. Mm -hmm. um, with every artesian well, it has a recharge area. And depending on how deep your well is, if there's anything like a well or like a, uh, a septic, septic system mm -hmm. yeah, uh, that's close enough to that water system, it's going to flow to the lowest it's going to find it yes right yes absolutely yes. yeah it is the path of least resistance mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so having your septic system as far away from your well as possible mm -hmm. is best uh, and the environmental health department is really good about the the permitting process mm -hmm. of looking at where you can put your septic system uh, used to they more like they relied pretty heavily on a perk test. Mm -mm. They still do a perk test, but they a lot of ones, a lot of environmental health departments now require a class three soil test, mm -hmm. which looks at the composition of the soil and how its We've ability, had some of those, yeah. yeah, yeah, how its ability to to drain that water off mm -hmm. is going to be. Well, we have a we have a lot that's a little bit over an acre, and I have somebody interested in in building on it, but it also has part of it on a floodplain, and so. You can't use the floodplain part, so that releases it. It's not quite an acre now, and we're looking at doing a soil test. Yeah. So it would need that level three, wouldn't it? It would. Yeah, yeah. And and people don't understand that because you're standing there looking at a piece of land, and they say, well, it's an acre. It's big enough. No, it's not <laughs> because we have some floodplain. Right. And we have, you know, so it's an issue. And depending on which county that you're located in, mm -hmm. a lot of counties require you now to have a alternate site for septic systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So not just, all right, I have enough room to put a tank and a, a septic system, but if that fails, they want you to have a, a separate piece. In case. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because what are you going to do, pick up your house and move it because your septic system failed? No. And you barely skid in on the seat of your pants, basically, <laughs> is what it amounts to. So. Yeah, in those kind of scenarios, you're either faced with having to put in a more expensive uh, specialized system mm -hmm, to try mm -hmm. to deal with that waste or mm -hmm. try to connect to, to sewer if it's mm -hmm, available. Mm -hmm. There's another thing I love, see? I, I love the idea that there's somebody there, the city water, the city sewer, they take care of business and you don't have to. That's pretty amazing. And it's it really is reasonable. You know, everybody says, oh, but it costs so much. No, if you look at maintaining a system or replacing a system. So, right. Okay, what other notes have you got that we want to carry? We want to do, we've got to, we are going to go, have we got the guys lined up so we can show them? Okay, we want to show this right quick because Burnt Mountain Center, we love you and I just want to share this with you.
whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella Day, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ. How may I serve you? The mountains are calling, and they're closer than you think. Farmers Crossing in Ballground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, Calvin Farmer Park, and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third generation race car driver. And we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Okay, all right, if you get your water bill and it looks excessive, tell me, you said the number of gallons per person a day should be about 100 gallons? The national average is 100 gallons per person per day. Cherokee County, it's 46. Yes, ma'am. We're doing better than the nation. <laughs> We're doing better than the nation. Imagine that. Yeah. Now, Will, tell them quickly. Let's let's wind it down. But tell tell folks if they want to take a tour, how they get in touch with y'all. Absolutely. You can reach out to myself and I'll put you in contact with the right people. My email address is will.england, E-N-G-L-A-N-D, at ccwsa.com. Uh, and I can direct you to the right people in order to get that where it happened. Uh, and we offer water and wastewater plant tours. So you can see both sides of the water and see what all goes into it and the, the process and the amount of effort that mm -hmm. That goes into the I think for of water. a kid taking science or even having an interest in science, I think it'd be amazing it is. to see the process. And, yeah. and I'm going to go gather some water from another source and have it tested because I saw it and it had a lot of stuff in it and I wouldn't drink it. So um, it's important to know what's going in our body, number one, because we become what we ingest, don't we? Mm -hmm. If you ingest a Sherry Martin Blizzard, though, <laughs> you become sweeter. <laughs> <laughs> So don't let it stop you from meeting Sherry Martin Blizzards. Thank you for being here today. Yes, ma'am. This was very informative, and I, I know just testing wells, I know that sometimes people get in trouble because they, they buy a piece of property, they build a home, and there really isn't enough space between the well and the septic if there's a problem. I right. just saw that happen here in Gilmer County, and the young lady's having to Re redo a bunch of stuff. So it's expensive and it's hard. It is. Yeah. And there's a lot of misconceptions about water and wastewater. Some mm -hmm. of the misconceptions for waste, like septic systems in particular, mm -hmm. is that those enzymes that you flush down the toilet, uh, they're not necessary. There's no scientific evidence to say that they're benefit to your septic tank. Wow. 
another common misconception I've heard is that a, a mushy area, you know, people say, oh, my grass is growing better right there. That must be where the septic no. tank is. That means it's failing. Yes. And they're supposed yes. to be pumped every five years, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. every three to five, but five mm -hmm. being the most. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of maintenance that goes into to septic tanks. Uh, and, you know, I've heard a lot, well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. But in that kind of scenario, when your your sewage is backing up into your home, that the problem's already too late. Yeah. And so yeah. uh, the healthy maintenance with anything is, you know, mm -hmm. you need to, to maintain a system like that. Uh, I learned so. that the hard way. The kids said, there's something mushy down in the end of the yard. Yeah. Yeah, there was. Yeah, it was expensive. Yeah, there was. <laughs> Yeah. Absolutely. A lesson learned and, and be on top of it. And and I love that you said it's not necessary to put those enzymes because I'll buy that once a month, but it's not necessary. It's not. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Save $7. <laughs> yeah. There are a lot of misconceptions yeah. Yeah. out there. And so anything I can do to help inform the public. Of, mm -hmm. uh, now, where will you be next? I know you did the meet and greet in Ball Ground. Where's your next one? I haven't set up my next one yet, okay. so I'm not sure. We did, the, we did the drinking water week one in Ball Ground mm -hmm. because it's a national campaign. Mm -hmm. So we, we try to you know, let people know about the CCR, the fact it's available, what's in it, try to answer any questions that people might have. Um, we try to make it as reader friendly as possible. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, different people that have questions, they'll, they'll say, oh, um, I had a, a filter guy contact me it said my water's not safe to drink is that true mm -hmm. and so all we can say is well here's your consumer's confidence report mm -hmm. what is the filter what does it say that you're trying to get rid of mm -hmm. what do you know what's in your water that you're trying to to fix mm -hmm. is it does it need fixing mm -hmm. um, I myself I drink the county water and mm -hmm. so I it tastes as good as or better than a lot of bottled water a lot better yeah. <laughs> a lot better a lot better well, it's time for us to get out of here. I'm headed Dr. Bound again. And uh, tomorrow, remember at 11 o'clock, the poke salad special will be on and you will get to see the process, the making and the mushing and the picking and the, all that stuff. And if you were looking for poke salad, I think there's still some over at Harrison Park that we didn't scavenger up. Have a great, great afternoon, y'all. And uh, thank you again for your prayers. I appreciate it very much. And um, we're going to lick this thing. We're going to do it. Thank you well for being here. Yes, ma'am. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Bye, y'all.